Okay, it's a very warm, I guess it's summer. It's summer here anyway, it's over 100 degrees. Very warm day in Arizona. And that prompted me to remember that I want to take care of some cooling issues. One area that we have that gets warm is the inverter cabinet. Now, I don't use the inverter too much, but it's in this little enclosed space with the grate in the door. The fans, are on this end of the inverter and they blow into the case and then the exhaust comes out here and it sort of aligns with the grate in the door and you can kind of feel some air coming out and you can feel the air coming out of the case also when the inverter is on. However, it's still not optimal. So what I am going to do is install an additional fan and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. First, we have a 120 volt fan and it just connects on here. I'll post a link to the fan that I bought. I bought this on uh, Amazon. So it's a very quiet fan and it uh, moves a decent amount of air. So what we'll do is mount this fan over the door. It does have a grate to cover as I move the phone. It does have a grate to cover the back side of the fan for protection. And then there's enough space in between the inverter and the door for it to sit. It'll sit about like this. It's going to pull air out of the inverter. It's going to exhaust it out the door. Now that air has to come from someplace and it just so happens that there's an opening back in the back of the cabinet. That is going to be the door wheel well area, or not door, the wall and wheel well area. So it will pull air from this uh, open area behind the cabinetry. It's not gonna get a lot from there, but some. And this isn't moving a huge amount of air to begin with, so it's not like it's creating this major vacuum to suck air out of the uh, open space behind the cabinets. But positioning the fan where it will vent from the approximate area of the inverter is what we're trying to accomplish here. So you may ask, well, how do you give this thing power? On this side of the inverter, there is a 120 volt power outlet for powering devices such as this. So what we are going to have to do is unscrew the inverter from the floor move it because there's no way to reach that. I've tried before. And then we can run the wire either behind or in front of the inverter. I'll attach it to the door here and then attach the fan to the door itself. And you can see that I've test fit this previously and I will uh, mount it more permanently. I have removed all of the screws from the inverter that hold it in place. I'm gonna scoot it out of the way ever so slightly. Okay, maybe not. Okay, we have it loose. I have a sneaking suspicion that our friends at Heimer used double-sided tape underneath that also, just like they did everything else. So now we will plug this in. Since we can reach it now, back here. I'm gonna grab some light so that I can see what I'm doing. Okay, now that we can see what we're doing, uh, you can see right there where the light is focused is the outlet. And that's where we're going to plug this fan in. So I'm gonna put the camera down and plug this in, and then I'll show you how it operates. So this shows you the direction of flow on the fan, and it shows you on the case itself the direction of the fan, the way that the blades turn, and you can see that it would blow the air that way. So this is going to be inside the cabinet. This will be facing the outside. It's an awfully tight fit, so what I'm going to do is install, install, I'm going to plug in a, a, an extension cord with a flat, um, a flat plug so that it doesn't get bound up back there. It's kind of hard to see, but the plug itself for the fan is being 
compressed by the, uh, the short distance between the inverter. I need to watch what I'm doing with the camera. Uh, anyway, there's not enough room there. So I'm gonna put in a, uh, an extension cord with a flat plug, plug the fan into that. And then I have plenty of room for the wiring um, on, into the cabinet itself so that it, it looks clean. And then the fan will mount right there where I've test fitted. So I'm going to assemble all of this and then I'll show you the final product. Oh, but first, you know what? I'll show you how this works. So I have my batteries on right now. I'm gonna turn the inverter on and you'll see the fan start to pick up. It's not real loud, but it moves a decent amount of air. But I bought this fan specifically because it's quiet and that plugs directly into the back of that. This is what we have to work with and I'm going to assemble it and I'll show you the finished product. Here's the extension cord we're going to work with. This is a shorty three foot with a flat plug. It's not grounded, um, but neither is the fan. And really, I don't plan on plugging anything else um, into this device anyway. I could put an LED light or something in there, maybe, and I'll be able to do that. But for all intents and purposes, this is the only thing that's gonna plug into the back of the inverter. Okay, so here we have the extension cord plugged in, and then the inverter will slide back into place. Again, there's not a lot of room to work here, so just you know, be careful with what you're doing. You don't wanna put undue pressure on anything. Just a couple of quick notes. My screws are too long, and so they'll poke through the front of the cabinet, and I don't want that. But I also don't want to go buy shorter screws. So because I already have some pilot holes uh, drilled, I'm going to trim these screws so that they only go about halfway into the wood. Also, I'm using some little rubber grommets for standoffs for um, noise insulation and vibration dampening. Okay, and here we have the finished product. I love me some wire loom and zip ties. I have it zip tied to the fan frame. It's got the protection here for the blades. Wire loom for the cord, along with something to hold it in place. And, and then the cord zip tied here. You know, and it leaves this plug open if I want to plug in an LED light or something like that. But like I said, I'm not planning on anything like that. The thing to remember is this is not a high powered cooler. It's not designed and my use is not, my use case is not for something that's going to be overworked. I'm not a heavy um, inverter user to begin with. So mine will run fairly cool no matter what. I use it occasionally for the microwave, um, stuff like that. So is this the optimal or the best cooling for this cabinet? No. Is it an improvement? Absolutely. And will it make a difference? Absolutely. It will help pull some of that heat from this. Now you can see that it's not straining at all right now. Um, the fan's not even on because I'm not running anything except for the cooling fan here. But this little bit of help will keep the cabinet at least um, some airflow at all times if the inverter is on. And that's not a bad thing. And the air will come from behind the cabinets, which in theory should be a little cooler. Um, the fan itself is not directly in front of the vent on the inverter but it's close enough that you can actually see it. So it's, it's proximal, um, but it's close enough that it does a couple of things. One, it will pull the heat that's coming out of the vent, but two, it's not gonna fight with the vent. So in the, in the case that the fan is on and there's air blowing out of this, this would blow directly on the cooling fan and could cause it to not operate as efficiently. At least in this way, the heat will, in part, hit the door, if I can 
focus the camera. And, and then the fan will suck it from this area, from this general vicinity where all the heat is collecting to begin with. And then there's still the passive ventilation uh, going on over here, going on over here. But yeah, so this was an inexpensive addition, um, super easy, didn't cost me anything in wiring. Um, you know, it was all just kind of right here anyway. And it is quiet. And it makes me feel better that I do have some cooling going on. And you can hear it. It's, it's actively, I mean, it's creating a breeze. It's definitely pulling air from the inside of the cabinet. So there you have it. Um, you know, this is applicable to any small enclosed space that has something in it that would generate heat. If you have a stereo, perhaps, uh, amplifier, you know, I know some RVs have audio equipment in cabinets like this. Um, anything that could use some ventilation that a fan would be helpful with. Now this fan is AC and I bought it specifically for that reason because it plugs into the back of the inverter. There are 12 volt uh, fans available, obviously. Something that you would see on like a computer case, something like that. And that would be easy to wire anywhere in the van. So there you go. I hope this was helpful. Maybe it got you thinking about something. If you have any questions or comments about it, let me know. I'll answer anything that I can. And until next time, as always, have a great day.